guys. Ah, Lake Pierce uh, at the ranch. We're back here now. It's almost winter time. We haven't done any videos, uh, Kevin tells me, since July. And now it's uh, November, the 1st of November. Really nice outside, sunny day, green, uh, but uh, we had a little few flurries last night and the temperature's around 35 degrees. That's like uh, zero for you uh, folks up north. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's beautiful, beautiful. However, you can see, you can tell that it's not July. Exactly. About two weeks ago, we started our first fire. Had a chilly night, and it was damp outside. We just felt chilly, Diane and myself, so we said, let's start a fire, because there is nothing like a good wood fire, a real fire. This is not propane or electric. A real wood fire. There is nothing. It smells wonderful. The heat is fantastic. It's a dry, dry heat. It just makes you toasty and warm and dries everything up, makes you feel nothing like a, a really good wood fire. Now, you folks who live in the country, you know what I mean. Yeah, and folks in the city, too. You can have wood fires, too. Becoming very popular, actually. But anyway, so we have the fire going. Now, you've already seen some videos uh, on Alec Pierce at the ranch about my airtight zero clearance wood stove. I've shown you a bit about uh, how it works. I've shown you, more importantly, the back to show you how it was zero clearance. That right here, I'm as close as I can get. This, this would burn terribly if I put my hand on there, if I got much closer. The, the radiant heat from here through that inch thick glass is tremendous. But at the back, I can go right, put my hand right against the back of the stove. Absolutely. That's why it's called zero clearance. You don't have to have any clearance between the back of the stove and combustibles as you would with a normal wood stove. And uh, it's also an airtight stove. Now, uh, airtight, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that unlike an old fashioned, traditional, open faced, big brick fireplace, that take, uh, you start a fire and it takes air from the room into the fire, burns the wood and the smoke goes up the chimney and you, you, you were heated by the radiation from the flames. Unlike that, the, uh, a, a, an airtight stove takes no air from the room, which makes a whole lot of sense if you think about it because the room air is being heated up and with an old fashioned open faced fireplace, it takes that nice warm air, sucks it into the fireplace uses it to burn the wood, and up the chimney it goes, you see? With an airtight like this, you get the heat from the radiation, and in the case of our stove, we actually pump the heat all around the whole house. This heats our entire house. And, uh, and, and it takes no air from the room, so the room gets nice and toasty, the whole house gets toasty. Well, where does the air come for the fire to burn the wood? Well, because there, there, there's a pipe outside, large, steel pipe wrapped in insulation that takes air in to the fire, to the fire box. It's, that air is used to, to, uh, to burn the wood, keep the fire going, and then after it's burnt, it goes up the chimney. So that air system comes from outside, burning and out the chimney, but nothing to do with the house, you see? It's called airtight. And you can see the difference it makes because there is a draft control. If you, I don't know if you can see this or not, Kevin. Let's try it. But you can see the way the fire is burning right now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to open the draft so air comes in really quickly. Let's see if it makes a difference. I'm not sure if you can see much of a difference. Getting a little bit brighter maybe and you can see some sparks because now it's getting more air from outside. Whoa, it is getting brighter. Yeah, you can see the difference. Now I'm going to shut it down shut off the airflow. You don't shut it off completely. It always has to have some air. Oh yeah, you can see it's already gone down a little bit. Anyway, uh, so that's what a zero clearance airtight stove does. Let's talk about the airtight part. Airtight means exactly that. It's airtight. The only air going into the firebox to burn the wood is coming from that pipe from outside. That's in theory. Now, this stove has doors on it. You've seen me open and close the doors. You've actually seen how I seal the doors every year, pretty much every year, it's not expensive. I put new gaskets on there, those asbestos or whatever they are now, I'm not sure what they use, but those uh, heat-proof gaskets so the door, when the door closes, it's tight, it's airtight. No air is drawn in through the doors, it's sealed all the way around. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now, if you've had your fireplace for a couple of years, you know, uh, and sometimes those gaskets get squished, Sometimes they can get overheated and they actually will start to deteriorate, crumble and so on. So it's possible that there is actually air being sucked in around the door. You don't want that. You don't want that for several reasons. First of all, it's hard on those gaskets, hard on the door. You are drawing warm air out of the room. The whole system is not working perfectly the way it ought to. It should be airtight. 
The only air is coming from that pipe. No air going through the cracks in the door. How do you check? If you have got your uh, airtight wood stove uh, manual in hand, you know that what they suggest you do is get a strip of newspaper, just a strip maybe two inches wide and six inches long, and, and that you put those strips of newspaper behind the door and close the door. Put a whole bunch of them. That's what I've done. I put a whole bunch of so a strip of newspaper several places around the door. With our particular wood stove, since we have two doors and there's a gasket in between the two doors, we even put strips of newspaper in the middle. And what they suggest in your owner's manual is that you put the strip in and when you, if you take a hold of that piece of newspaper and tug on it, it should stick. It shouldn't slide out. If it slides out, probably there's a leak in there. And that system works pretty well. But I have a better idea. Oh yeah, there's a much easier, a much more definitive way to know if your airtight wood stove is leaking air. We're going to use smoke. We're going to use a smoke stick to check on the wood stove. There's two ways you can do that. What you're going to do actually is, is you're going to generate some smoke. You're going to use a smoke stick to make, make a bit of smoke. And then all you do is you simply hold that smoke stick around the wood stove and watch the smoke. The smoke curls up nice and smoothly and slowly into the room. Make sure that your, your smoke detectors don't go off. Nah, not, that, not very much smoke. So the smoke curls up, up past the edge of the door. Now if you get the spot right here, for instance, where there's a leak, the smoke doesn't curl lazily up to the ceiling. It gets sucked in. You can see it. You can watch it. You can, you can see it sucked right in through the crack. Air leak. So you have to adjust the door a little bit at that spot. That's all there is to it. You use a smoke stick to detect air leaks all around the door. Now it's pretty neat because these smoke sticks can be used for a lot of different things. You can use a smoke stick to detect leaks around your electrical outlets on a windy day, leaks around the door. If you hold this around, the, around one of your doors and go around the door like that, if there's a leak, air coming in on a windy day, you'll see the smoke blowing into the house. Get more weather stripping, fix that door. The whole idea, of course, is to make the house and the fireplace, in this case, airtight and warmer, more efficient. So where do you get these smoke sticks? Well, I got this smoke stick in the kitchen. <laughs> this is simply a piece of paper towel. Take a piece of paper towel, roll it fairly tightly into a nice little roll, and then get a good lighter and light the end of it. Now let it burn just a little bit like so. Can you see that, Kev? See the flames there? Let it get burning a little wee bit and then blow it out. Blow it out. See that? That's the smoke. Now, what I'm going to do, first of all, is turn off that fan over there. Now you can see the nice smoke going up. Now watch what happens. I bring it over close to the fireplace and you see the smoke still goes up. I'm going to stop for one minute. I need to turn off the internal fan. It's still blowing in there. I notice that the smoke is still being sucked into the bottom here because there's a fan in there drawing air in to get heated up and pumped around the house. But now there's no fan in the fireplace. Let's see what happens. We'll take the smoke stick and go around like this, around the edge. And you can watch very carefully. You can see the actual lines of smoke traveling up. And uh, so far it's pretty good. Doesn't look like anything's being sucked in. Let's go along this uh, center. No, it's pretty good. So you see, the process is really quite simple. Now, I put new gaskets in this wood stove <clears throat> in the fall, a little while ago. So it should be pretty good. It really should be pretty good. And it's just that simple. However, let me show you something else that's pretty neat. This is not my idea. Not my idea. As a matter of fact, you can go to your <clears throat> local... Uh, uh, fireplace store. Uh, if not, your fireplace supplier would be able to get this for you. But they actually have this device. It's called a draft detector. <laughs> what this is, is, is a, an expensive piece of paper towel <laughs> rolled up. That's all it is. It's the same thing, but it's pretty neat. Let me show you what it is. I'm going to open this up. And when you open it up inside, <clears throat> you find this thing it looks like a ballpoint pen. See that? Okay. Comfort Plus draft detector. Okay, Kev? And, and it's got a plastic cap on it, which you should hang on to. <clears throat> we'll take that plastic cap off. And, and, and now it, it does look like a ballpoint pen. Can you see what I'm doing here, Kev? Can you see that? 
because if you push on this little red button and push it up, watch the top end there, you'll see that something comes out at the top end, just like that, like a ballpoint pen. Now what that is, is a wick. In fact, they give you a spare wick. There's a spare, brand new one. This one I've used already a couple of times. So there's a little wick in there. And all you need to do, just as the same as with the paper towel, is light that wick with your really good lighter. There we go. So light the wick on the end there. Well, it takes a second. See? Now look at the smoke. Pull it down a little bit. Now you got a little stick with smoke coming up. And now once again, it's a simple matter going around. You see the smoke coming out of the wick? Can you see that, Kevin? And it's curling up over the edge of the fireplace. No air leaks. Fantastic. Now, let's make an air leak. I'll simply loosen the door. Okay, now watch what happens. You see that, Kev? The smoke is being sucked off the tip of the draft detector, off the tip of that burning wick, and it disappears. It's being sucked in underneath the door, not going up the sides. See it? Can you get sucked in there, Kevin? Look at that. Works great, huh? Let's seal the door up again. There we go. Just that simple. So you go all the way around your stove, and just, and I'm going to put this out now. To pull it out, you pull that down in so it gets no air, and then after it's cooled off, put the plastic cap on and put it away. Just that easy. That's how you check for air leaks in your airtight stove. There's the title for this video now, Kevin. We knew what to do. Checking for air leaks in your airtight stove. There you go. This is really warm. Okay, that's it, Kevin. I'm going to go upstairs now. We're done for today. I think I'm going to pour myself a drink, sit down here, lean back, and enjoy this fire. Talk to you soon, guys. Alec Pierce at the ranch.